Okay, so now that we deleted the cube, you can kind of see that our guy is way over there, really far away. So what we're going to do is just move our CG player, or CG player, we go ahead and move our CG character by grouping him, and then scooting him towards the camera, okay? So that he is closer. Just like so. Okay, so if I press play now... See that he is animating. See, that's really good. That looks nice, right? Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and change our viewport background to go ahead and configure. We're going to do use file, animate, and we'll click the files. Now, 3ds Max takes um, JPEGs, uh, sequences, image sequences. So go ahead and export your backdrop like I'm doing right now. Uh, it is a sequence. I'm going to go ahead and open. Yep, start frame is zero. And then press OK. So now you should have this guy tracked walking across the field. But we actually want him on the road right here. So I'm going to grab him like this and I'll rotate him. I'm just doing R E. Rotate this guy. Just like so. Okay, and it looks like that's the final kind of position he's in, but start right here. It's pretty cool that he's actually tracked in there. So I'm just making sure that the direction that he's going makes sense. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, if I were to do a test render here, it's not going to work. Because let's go ahead and save it first. So, tut1. Alright, so what we're going to do is press F10. And make sure we're in scanline render because, like I said, the CG element, the 3ds Max project from Tool of Squid has scanline render. Um, already set the height and width, so that's good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to rendering, environment, and then I'm going to go ahead and press M to pull up my material. And then I'm going to go to the diffuse right here. And I'm going to type bitmap. And then I'm going to go to that image sequence again, right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and use that as an environment and screen is okay. And I'm going to go ahead and go use map, none, and I'm going to scroll all the way down to sample slots and make an instance out of that. So now if I press F9 to render, we should see it properly. Now, granted, I'm probably going to export it with a black background so I can composite it in After Effects like we did in Blender. But I just want to see that, you know, it is working. Okay, so we're not going to do a lot of crazy stuff as far as lighting goes, but we will need a light because um, we are going to create some shadows. Okay, so if I go to light and I change this to standard, create a skylight right here, and then it's on, sky color is white, cast shadows. We are also going to need to add a plane. So I'm going to do a rough plane right here. You can already see the shadows. Press P so I can scroll out. And I just want to make sure. And that's actually a pretty big plane. I'm going to go ahead and just move this. Okay. And then it's always a good idea to actually increase the segments of your shadow plane whenever you're creating one. So let's go back to the camera, camera view. Boom, it's good. And I'm going to go back to material. I click a new swatch here. And then I'm going to go to standard legacy. And I'm going to drop a matte shadow material. Press OK. Sorry, not drag and drop. And then I'm going to drag and drop it after that. So now if I press F9, you should not see that plane. You should see the road. It's pretty amazing, man. It's just 
this is some really cool stuff. I mean, you don't you don't have to do tracking. 3D tracking is what sells CG stuff. So having an iPhone 12 and the FX Home Cam Track AR do it all for you. Ah, oh, man. Look at this. That looks amazing. That looks great. Um, but like I said, the limitations are the resolution. But I did talk to them and they said they are going to get 30 frames per second. They are going to try to get 30 frames per second instead of 60. Because, you know, that would help. But as you can see, scan line is, takes a little bit of CPU power. So it is rendering it a little slow. So you can see right here, um, it's using all my CPU. If I had V-Ray, then it would use GPU. But in this case right here, it's CPU. All right. Looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do is just... I'm just going to turn that um, that skylight up. Maybe like to 10 and just press render again so I can see just to kind of match it a little bit and you can also use like HDRI if you want it to match the lighting even more so than what we're doing right now and that's a little bit too bright 5 is a little bit too bright so or 10 so let's go ahead and go back in there to the skylight it's 2 5 Still a little bit too bright, so let's just do one more, and then I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is just export this, and then um, I doubt it's gonna finish tonight, and just come back tomorrow and finish the rest of the tutorial. So let's go ahead and go right here. Looks good. Just making sure that it makes sense, and I might have to move the plane, because as you can see, it's actually covering his foot here. So, yeah, you can see his feet scan buried there. That means that the plane is overlapping with his foot. So, press P. And I'm going to go ahead and fly over there. That's why we switched to perspective because I'm not messing up my, um, my camera. Yep, so all I got to do is drop this down a little bit. Like so. Yeah, it's a little bit too much. How's that? Much better. Looks good. Alright guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and render this, and I'll be back later. Alright guys, so we are back in 3DS Max. Now the uh, CG and the shadows were rendered both i was able to render the cg without the shadows a little bit faster by using quicksilver right here hardware renderer but the problem was quicksilver hardware renderer doesn't um i couldn't get it to actually render the shadows so i had to do a separate pass so i did a cg pass for the robot and i did a shadow pass using scanline render for the shadow plane the cg took like five minutes to render and then the shadow plane took like an hour or so because it was using scanline which is the cpu and the quicksilver uses gpu so with a 3090 a lot quicker only issue was it doesn't render the shadow plane all right so with that being said let's go ahead and hop into after effects and composite all these together. So I'm going to go to Camp Track 2. I'm going to go ahead and go get that video first. Drag it into a new comp. It's already set up. 4x3. Let's go get our exports. So if I go all the way out. We're going to go with Robot first. And then I'm going to go ahead and get the Shadow as well. That's okay. So for the Shadow, I rendered it as a Targa. And then for the CG Robot, I did as an Open EXR. Alright, so let's go ahead and interpret the footage to make sure that we're at 60 frames per second. And then for the robot shadow as well. Oh, robot shadow as well at 60 frames per second. Alright, so let's go ahead and put our robro down there. And then the shadow just right below it. And now if I press 0 on my keyboard, it's going to preview. Alright, so to make sure that we do have a shadow in there. So let's go ahead and... Yep, you can see the shadow. Right there, it rendered correctly, and then the robot on top of it. So as you can see, it's all in there, composited, 
and everything so and what i'm gonna do is somebody wanted to see it kind of exported so that's what we're gonna do but as you can see it's tracked in there <laughs> like i said man I, it literally took me 20 seconds to record this video and the tracking information with it it's absolutely insane what did we accomplish we took a free cam track ar app from iphone 12 recorded a video with tracking information put it into blender and then exported it from blender to 3ds max and then we had a perception neuron uh, motion captured animation that we imported from axis neuron exported it to 3ds max so a lot of software is working but majority of them are free